I'm very excited for today's video because we're making 15 easy shaking cocktails. So it's gonna be lots of shaking, lots of smiling, and plenty of cocktails to go around. I'd love to see your feedback in the comments below to let me know which one you would love to drink. Now the first couple I'm gonna start with are easy. They're modern classic cocktails, so you're probably gonna to to be familiar with them before I move into some cocktails that you probably haven't heard of before, you probably haven't tried before. So make sure you stick around, let's get shaking. So first cocktail on the list is a Gold Rush. This is a modern classic cocktail by Sam Ross and is delicious. It's three ingredients, it's super simple. Bourbon whiskey, lemon juice, and honey. First of all, you wanna measure two ounces of bourbon whiskey. Follow that up with Honey syrup, this is a three to one honey syrup. Three quarter ounce. And three quarter ounce of fresh lemon juice. Freshly squeezed, only squeezed about an hour ago. Add ice and give it a shake. Shake number one. I'm gonna be so tired by the end of this. Strain that into a glass full of ice and garnish with a big twist of lemon. The Gold Rush. And the next cocktail that we have coming up is the French Pearl, which includes mint, gin, pastis, the nice flavored spirit slash liqueur that sits at about 45%. So I've added six mint leaves into the cocktail shaker, measuring 60 ml, two ounces of gin, adding that straight on top. If you want, you can give this mint a light muddle, but at the end of the day, it's a gentle herb, so when you shake it, the ice is gonna pulverize it and impart that minty flavor throughout the drink. Then we've got a quarter, quarter ounce of pastis. If you don't have this, then maybe you could go absinthe. Completely up to you. Quarter ounce, and then we have three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. Fill your cocktail shake with ice, and shake. For the sake of the video, I'm not actually pre-chilling my glass, but I always recommend it. And of course, it's got mint in the shaker, so make sure you double strain. And garnish that one with the little baby sprig of mint. Now, vodka doesn't get much screen time on the channel here, so I've got to squeeze one in. Considering that I'm doing 15 cocktails, I'm doing a pineapple martini. Add one and a quarter ounce of vodka straight into the cocktail shaker, followed by a single ounce of fresh pineapple juice. Quarter ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed. Freshly squeezed. And rich syrup. I've actually got a rich demerara. It'll still work. And we've got one bar spoon, five mil, sixth of an ounce. Add ice and give it a shake. Double strain, they have a very simple pineapple martini. And now we're onto the sidecar, which is Chip Tyndale's winning recipe on punchdrink.com. They always hold these ultimate cocktail uh, competitions between bartenders over in the States, and out of the, the panel of judges, this was the best sidecar recipe that they, uh, that they liked, that they tried. So, two ounces cognac, followed by three quarter ounce of Cointreau. So an orange liqueur, if you've got a triple sec, dry curacao, feel free to substitute. Straight to the shaker, follow that up with freshly pressed lemon juice, three quarter ounce as well. And if you like your sidecars or your drinks in general dry, then maybe you could stop here. It's completely up to you, but this recipe has five mil, one bar spoon of rich Demerara syrup. Add ice to your shaker and give it a shake. Should try up some new shaking techniques. And double strain into a chilled glass. Then garnish with a big twist of orange. So we're already up to cocktail number five, which is the Trader Vic Sour. Now you can choose between a Scotch whiskey or a bourbon whiskey. Considering I've done other bourbon whiskey cocktails and I'll do a couple more later in the video, I'm gonna opt for Famous Grouse, a blended Scotch whiskey. So two ounces of your preferred whiskey, add that straight into the cocktail shaker, 
and then quickly follow that up with three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. So by opting for a scotch whiskey over bourbon whiskey, you're gonna perhaps add some subtle smoky characteristics uh, to your drink. And then I'm gonna add au jar. So an almond syrup, half an ounce, followed by simple syrup, a quarter ounce. Add ice to your cocktail shaker, give it a quick shake. I feel like single straining this one and garnishing with a piece of lemon. Try to fix sour. And it's time for another vodka cocktail, a cosmopolitan citrus vodka. One and a half ounces. And I'm gonna follow that up with orange liqueur. Contro, if you have a triple sec, like I said before, dry cure sour, feel free to sub. Three quarter ounce. And then cranberry juice, one ounce. And then half an ounce of fresh lime juice. Now this recipe is from Sarah Morrissey and it's also her entry into the punch drink search for the ultimate cosmopolitan. So don't bother searching anywhere else for a cosmopolitan recipe because this is the best, apparently. and straight into your glass. Garnish with an orange twist and discard. Onto the Daryl Strawberry at the Yankees. This one is like a wannabe smash. This one has three wedges of lemon, one strawberry. It's muddled. 1.5 ounces of Amaro Montenegro. Half an ounce of a lighter style rum. I'm using Angostura. So it's half an ounce before we add half an ounce of Demerara syrup. This is a rich syrup. Half an ounce before dry shaking all the ingredients together to combine. Now we're gonna transfer the contents of the shaker into the glass and top it with pebble ice. That doesn't look pleasant. Add a splash of soda, and then garnish with strawberry and lemon. Onto the smoke also rises. It's kind of intriguing this one, and this is kind of like a twist on a Hemingway daiquiri. Okay, so we're going to measure out two ounces of lightly aged rum followed by Spumata Rhubarbaro. I think that's how you pronounce it. And thank you, of course, for buying the back bar. Uh, 15 mil, half an ounce. Quarter ounce. Maraschino liqueur. Maraschino. Half an ounce of fresh lime juice and half an ounce of fresh grapefruit juice. This is white grapefruit juice. Then quarter ounce, just a touch of simple syrup. Add that to the shaker. It's just so weird. So the smoke also rises a interesting mix on a Hemingway daiquiri. And that's garnished with a lime milk. And it's time for the Campari Shakerado. Very simple, only a couple of ingredients. You've got Campari and saline solution. That's pretty much it. And admittedly, it does have a couple of drops of orange blossom water too, so it's gonna add a nice floral note. The saline is gonna subdue the bitterness and make it uh, a little bit fresher, a little bit poppier, a little bit more vibrant. So, Noah is not happy with the Campari Shakerado. I'm measuring, <laughs> I'm measuring out, I'm measuring out two and a half ounces of Campari. Adding that into my shaker. And I've got two dashes of saline. 
and two drops of orange blossom water. Ooh, that was quick. That almost got out of hand. And double strain it into a chilled Nicanora glass. Orange twist. For the final stretch now, we're doing the Sherry Cobbler by Dan Greenbaum. Montelado Sherry, a little bit of sugar, some citrus and some raspberries. Oh yeah. So measure out three ounces, 90 ml. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it's a relatively low ABV ingredient that sits at about 18 and a half percent. Three ounces of dry sherry, Montiato. You can possibly change for a fino if you want. And we've got half an ounce of simple syrup. Adds a little bit of sweetness. Then we're gonna add one wedge of lemon. Give that a cheeky muddle. Adds a little bit of acid into the drink. Then you've got three or four raspberries from my $10 punnet of raspberries. Really short shake. Slice of orange, a raspberry, and a sprig of mint. There you have Dan Greenbaum's Sherry Cobbler. And now we've got the Cloister Cocktail, which is a sweet herbal take on a Hemingway daiquiri. Sort of, without the rum. Yeah, it's got grapefruit juice in it. It's a twist on a Hemingway daiquiri, sure. Uh, this one has 1.5 ounces of your favorite gin. Half an ounce of yellow chartreuse. I get asked all the time if you can sub green chartreuse for yellow chartreuse. They're not interchangeable, they're different things. But if you're in a pinch, you could try it and you're probably still gonna make a decent cocktail. And we've got fresh white grapefruit juice, half an ounce, quarter ounce of lemon juice, and balance that acid with a quarter ounce of simple syrup. Add ice and shake the hell out of it. And then a grapefruit twist. I'm just doing a really rough looking swath because my grapefruit's looking a little bit lifeless to be honest. It's got no, it's got no structure, no backbone. This next cocktail is one of those that I've been very much looking to try. It's called the Snake Eyes. And it's kind of a coconut and banana mezcal margarita. Although there's not much lime, so there's not gonna be a lot of acid here, but it sounds intriguing, so let's give it a crack. So we're using La Luna Mezcal, measuring 1.5 ounces, followed by one of my least favorite ingredients, coconut water. I mean, once it's mixed in a cocktail, not so bad, but it's on, on its own, ugh, no. Uh, cane syrup, half an ounce. Ooh, that's thick. And then only quarter ounce of fresh lime juice. And then we've got banana liqueur, <clears throat> one bar spoon, one sixth of an ounce. Just add this little, little hint of banana into this mezcal margarita. Add ice and give it a shake. Now I've prepared an old fashioned glass with tahine on the side. The original recipe does call for salt, but I thought I'd give this a try. And then it's also filled with ice and we're straining over the top. Snake eyes. On to cocktail number 13, which is the one that I've been very much interested in trying. And it's the Milano Torino Sour. Now this particular recipe was created by Dan Sabo, who was the winner of Punch Drinks Ultimate Search for the best whiskey sour. Now I've done a video on that one where I've compared the top three entries. You can check it out up here and I'll link to it in the description below. But Milano Torino sour sounds like it's up my alley. This recipe consists of one ounce of Campari, one ounce of dry vermouth, white grapefruit juice, three quarters of an ounce, half an ounce of simple syrup, and half an ounce of lime juice. 
couple of dashes of orange bitters, and then of course, it's a sour, and about half an egg. Real quick, dry shake, and then we'll add some ice, and wet shake. I know I shake a little bit less, it's for the sake of the video, but shake for 10 to 12 seconds. We get a really nice textural, aerated, and ideally diluted drink. I love these glasses. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. The Milano Torino Sour. And onto the second to last cocktail, we have the More Supreme. So this actually reminds me of a cocktail that Jean Felix did on his channel, Truffle on the Rocks, and it was a uh, Campari Caprinia. 1.5 ounces of your preferred rum agricole and just a little bit of bitterness, one quarter ounce of Campari, followed by three quarter of an ounce of fresh lime juice, and half an ounce of cane syrup. There's quite a thick, quite a viscous syrup. You can make this at home. Oh, how very peachy looking. Another one that's left ungarnished, the More Supreme. Final cocktail, cocktail number 15. Last but not least is the Cutter. There's a rye whiskey based cocktail. It's got a whole bunch of ingredients in there. Probably the most complicated of the drinks that I have made today, considering that we have two, four, six, seven ingredients. Whoa, crazy. Uh, one and a quarter ounce of your choice of whiskey. A rye or a bourbon. I'm using a Canadian rye. Three quarter an ounce of Campari. Half an ounce of Amaro. I'm using Amaro Montenegro. Then we have fresh lemon juice. Three quarter ounce. And one quarter ounce of cane syrup. This one's served in a coupe. I'm adding some ice. Give it a shake. Into the coop it goes. Double strain. And again, I'm leaving this one naked. The cutter.